Welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Each week, we let you in on the secrets of Southern Idaho and speak to the people who make it such a unique hidden gem. I'm your host, Connie Stouffer. On today's episode, we'll learn what it was like to grow up in a non-traditional family in Idaho and how that experience helped shape one man's personal journey when we talk to Idaho native, entrepreneur, father, and author, Mike Ramsey. He'll share tips for small businesses, his favorite places to go for skiing, hot springs, and boating, and why Burley is a hidden gem in Southern Idaho. Mike Ramsey, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you being here and looking forward to chatting with you uh, more. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Of course. So I'm just going to start by having you tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, uh, the name, Mike Ramsey. Uh, I'm from Burley, uh, Burley, Idaho. Uh, I was born there uh, in 1984 and then moved around a little bit with my mom uh, and ended up back by fourth grade. So I consider myself like Burley, right? I, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I've, I've been there through all the things I can remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so uh, now I've been back there just after school and everything else. Mm-hmm. Let's see. It's been about 12 or 13 years after college. So uh, kind of crazy to look back <laughs> and realize like, yeah, my whole life has been spent in, in uh, Burley. <laughs> awesome. So where did you go to college? Uh, I went to Rexburg. So still in Idaho, That uh, that's BYU, Idaho up mm-hmm. there. Um, I spent a short, well, I spent two years in England uh, on, oh. on a mission um, for my church. And then I also spent some time living in Utah selling pest control and Minnesota mm-hmm. selling pest control. So, mm-hmm. and, and then all the rest of the time is basically Idaho. So the times you spent away, like in Rexburg and in England and Utah, did you mm-hmm. know you wanted to come back to Burley or is that something you kind of discovered along the way? You know, like through high school, I was very much in the camp of like, I will never ever <laughs> in a thousand years come back to Burley. You mm-hmm. know, like I, I think that's fairly normal. No matter um, where you're from yeah. in high school, you just want to leave. Exactly. Yeah. And and so, no, I don't think I was always set on on return. Um, so it's funny how life works. And it's, it's very interesting uh, to see where we end up and why we end up there. So what did bring you back? You know... Um, one was a girl. Oh, uh, no, it's always so, the story. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so I I ended up marrying someone from Burley, oh. and we knew each other uh, from about eighth, ninth grade on. We mm-hmm. didn't. It's not like we dated through all of high school, but we were friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so anyhow, I think really the situation was this: when we got married, uh, I had a little bit of time left in school, about a year, and. Uh, we were trying to figure out where to be and what to do, and I landed this job for a pest control company um, where I was going to run the marketing mm-hmm. uh, for for the whole organization. And they were more located with offices throughout the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And one of the owners was in Boise. Mm-hmm. One of the owners was in Utah. Mm-hmm. So it just really made sense that Burley was like this in between spot. And, and I was like, Hey, you know, we're both from there. Our families are there. Why not? Mm -hmm. So we started building a house and, uh, I eventually, I actually, during the building process, I left that, that company. Mm -hmm. So we, my wife was pregnant. I was building this house. Um, I was trying to finish college and then I had to figure out something. Tumultuous time. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Like I had to figure out something to do because we'd kind of committed to Burley. Um, this was in. Let's see, this would have been 2009, so mm-hmm. right as soon as the economy crashed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good timing. Good yes. <laughs> timing to, to come back and and be building, you know, in the middle of building this house. Um, so we, we decided to follow through with it. And then the next thing became like, um, you know, hey, Mike, what are you going to do for work to pay for this house? Mm-hmm. So... Uh, that's that's where Nifty, I guess, yeah. kind of steps in, right? Yeah. So tell me about that business. Okay. So uh, I I had been studying marketing in at, at college, and as part of that, I had one professor that was v- like really into internet marketing, mm-hmm. um, specifically doing what was called search engine optimization, or the idea of like how do you get websites to show up high on Google? Mm -hmm. And he had worked for a company where they did ads and they did the search engine marketing and and these different things um, for uh, for search engines. 
And so I took a couple classes. Um, and one of the classes was to start up a, a, a business, an online, you know, internet based business during the semester and try to have a sell mm -hmm. of some type. Mm -hmm. So I started um, a website called hugeidahopotatoes.com <laughs> and I sold uh, potatoes online. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like, I was so, like, So one yeah. unknown fact is that you can actually mail a potato yeah. without, yes, I, so did you do that? Yes, I mailed potatoes. I have no idea if this was legal. I have no I idea. I think it is, because I've heard yeah, about no, it too. it works, right? No, yeah. it works, yeah. So there's other companies doing it. It was fine. Um, I, I was buying them. Um, so, you know, I had to become a potato broker through the Idaho Potato Commission oh, to do right. this. Mm -hmm. Now they were super nice to me. It should have been way harder, but because I was a college kid and they were like, what are you doing? Yeah, they're like, you how know? many potatoes are yeah, you actually right? to sell? And, and so anyhow, I, I go and I do this and like become a potato broker, um, and bought, um, what's called 40 count potatoes, which mm -hmm. means that there's 40 count uh, or 40 potatoes in a 50 pound box, okay. meaning each potato is over a pound. They're huge yeah. potatoes. Mm -hmm. So we would ship, you know, a potato or a box of potatoes all over the place. And mm -hmm. we literally had orders from like all over. That's awesome. It's so random. <laughs> um, and, and I was like able to buy like one penny to three penny a click ads on uh -huh. Google at the time. Mm -hmm. And like, I was having fun with it. You know, I think I made a total of maybe like 150 total dollars, No, <laughs> but it was like, it showed me this power of internet marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so like while I was trying to figure out what to do, um, I thought, you know what, like it would be fun to do this, mm -hmm. to build websites and to do marketing, um, mm -hmm. for companies. Mm -hmm. And so I, I decided, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, why Burley? Well, it's because we were building a house mm -hmm. and because it's where I was from. Yeah. Um, and the benefit of it was that, you know, I didn't have to rely on Burley itself. Mm -hmm. Like I could have clients from anywhere, mm -hmm. um, but I could live there. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, so, so that's the start of this agency idea. And we mm -hmm. ended up naming it Nifty Marketing. Uh, and I spent a couple of years where it was just me and I was trying to drum up business anywhere and mm -hmm. any way I could. And I had like a few Idaho clients. Mm -hmm. Um, we still have like one of our original clients, Yellowstone bear world. That's oh yeah. Uh, that's an him. awesome place. Oh, it's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So yeah, they've, they've been awesome, um, over the years. And, and so, you know, we, then I had like storage units and I had towing companies and, and all of these companies, they were like small business, right? Mm -hmm. And it was right at the time where Google started bringing their Google Maps technology mm -hmm. into their search engine and merging it, saying, like, if you type in, uh, you know, like, I need a Twin Falls dentist, mm -hmm. then, like, they would show you map pins and results of, like, local businesses. And so, like, I started diving heavy, mm -hmm. heavy into that field. And um, it, was, it was a brand new, like, literally this brand new field of study. And there was probably about... I don't know, uh, five to 10 other people across the nation mm -hmm. that were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we all became friends and mm -hmm. we started sharing and publishing like our findings. Mm -hmm. And, and from that, like, that's kind of how my business took off mm -hmm. was we became experts in, uh, what was called the local search marketing mm -hmm. or, you know, this idea of this map technology yeah. and, and, you know, search engines. Yeah. And that can be a little intimidating if you're a small business owner, you run in a, a bakery or auto repair store or something, and you're an expert at doing that, but you mm -hmm. may not be an expert at building a website or figuring out how do you get your website found. We work with small businesses all the time and, and we bring that up to them and be like, people can't find you like, yeah. online. So if they can't find you online and you're a small town, you're off the beaten path, how are you going to dr drive traffic? And they're just like, I don't know how to start a website. I don't know how to figure out Google and algorithms are always changing and you might think you've got it figured out and then the next day it's different and so it's it's a challenging market out there for people to to wrap their heads around oh, if they totally. don't have the background in it yeah yeah and and it's and, and it's so complex and it's not what most people want to do for their business like mm -hmm. i i think that's the hardest thing as a business owner is like wearing a thousand hats mm -hmm. right and and so it's it is good to find um you know and focus at what you're good at and mm -hmm. and then find or figure out solutions for these other areas. And so that's, that's what we did. Like mm -hmm. we became that solution and, and, um, started to grow fairly rapidly, mm -hmm. um, from that experience. 
That's awesome. And what was the um, inspiration for the name? You know, this is so funny. Um, I actually don't love our name anymore. Oh, really? You know, it, it, like I, it's it's it, we're we're so branded into it and mm-hmm. well known across so many areas that like it's not worth changing. Yeah. But like when I first was looking, I w- I was thinking like, hey, small business and like. Um, this word came to mind, I was like duct tape marketing, mm-hmm. you know, and I thought, oh yeah, that's genius because it's kind of like put together and, yeah. and stuff. So anyhow, I look it up and there's this guy that has built this huge brand on <laughs> duct tape marketing. <laughs> You're like, well, I was like, never wow, mind. okay. All right. Well, that, I guess it worked for him. Should have had the idea earlier. And then, um, and then I was thinking of different words and, um, I was partially raised by my grandparents. I lived with them mm-hmm. off and on uh, through different times in my life. And my grandpa, one of his like favorite words is like nifty, right? Yeah. He'd always be like, oh, that's nifty. You know? <laughs> and, and so I was like, you know, nifty marketing kind of fits. And so that's, that's where the name came from. Mm-hmm. Um, and lucky enough, like I named, this is so bad at, for, for somebody who is in marketing and branding, like domain names are super important. Yeah. If you can get your exact business match domain name, like wonderful yeah well nifty marketing wasn't available mm-hmm. and i named the business nifty marketing and we had like the niftyway.com was our domain name which was <laughs> awful but like within six months whoever owned the nifty marketing domain just let it expire <gasps> and i was able to buy it for like nothing oh and that's so, awesome so like and that was just super lucky yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh so that's how we ended up with the name um mm-hmm. but we've had we, we, we also have different brands. So like, um, we are very focused in the legal industry now Mm -hmm. and we have, uh, you know, law firm clients in, in most of the States. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we have like nifty law that, Mm -hmm. that focused around the legal brand for Mm -hmm. us. So that's awesome. So do you have any tips for someone who's starting a new business? Um, whether it's digital or related or not, just tips for someone that's like, I don't know what I'm doing what's, what's, I don't know, what would you throw out there? You know, I would say the, the number one thing in, especially in today's like marketing world and and the market and the way everything's kind of facing is this, you have to own your brand identity. Mm -hmm. And, And what I mean by that is your business name, your business address and your business phone number. Like, and, you know, include your website on this, but like this information gets spread across the web on everything for Mm -hmm. like tons of directories. You have Yelp, you Mm -hmm. have Facebook that has a local aspect. You Mm -hmm. have Google, you have all of this. And and these sites go out and they try to scrape um, different databases Mm -hmm. for business information. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest problems I find with new businesses or even old businesses is they have such bad information about themselves Mm -hmm. online. They don't have the right phone numbers. They write their business name in different ways. So it's like, it could be Jerry's plumbing and then it's Jerry's and then it's Jerry's, Jerry's plumbing and electric Sons, service yeah. <laughs> and Jerry's sons. Yeah. And, and like, it's never the same. And the way that a lot of these websites work is they try to compile as much information about a specific business as possible. Mm-hmm. And so like, if you keep that data consistent, mm-hmm. it builds the case for why your business is recognizable. It will help better. you move up and yeah, search. It yeah. can. Mm-hmm. And, and on these different directories and everything else. So that, that, that data consistency is super, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some tools that you can use, um, such as like Yext, Y-E-X-T, um, Y-E-X-T.com mm-hmm. or um, Moz Local, M-O-Z um, Local that kind of like propagate this data Mm -hmm. um, to different places. But like owning that's important. Um, It's almost to the point, and and this is kind of like a a big mind shift for a lot of people, where like the website's important, Mm -hmm. it will always be important, but it's not the only place people like will get information about your business. So for instance, um, Google's mapping product, which for businesses is called Google My Business, Mm -hmm. they have this full profile that kind of serves as like the homepage or or the front page of your website. It'll have your hours and all that stuff. Yeah, it has everything that most people need. Mm -hmm. It has your phone number, it has hours, it has your services. Mm -hmm. Um, You can communicate with people directly on that listing through like chat service or or different things, like different offerings that they have. But also, um, you know, interestingly, there's reviews, Mm -hmm. which is one of the most important things that people look for. 
And so we found for some of our clients that um, anywhere between 30 to 50 percent of people looking for their business mm -hmm. don't ever land on their website. Mm -hmm. They might land on the Google My Business profile, look at what's on that, mm -hmm. and then call them directly um, without ever even visiting. And mm -hmm. so if, if it doesn't look good, you know, or if the reviews are, you know, not favorable, yeah. you're losing that business. That's uh, for sure. My husband yeah. and I just went out of town and we were looking for a place to go get brunch. And so I, that's what I did. I just Googled brunch spots near me mm -hmm. and pulled up a map with all the pins. And I just clicked on the pins, read like the top reviews and how much it was and how close it was to me. And some of them had really great reviews and some of them I was like, oh, I'm not going. Yeah, you're not going. And, yeah. and you probably didn't even click on a website. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, no, I for, didn't. Yeah, like in restaurants, like websites almost don't matter at this mm -hmm. point because there's so many good websites that exist that have the business data that people are looking for, which mm -hmm. largely is reviews and menu, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so, so like I, I think it's just understanding your industry Mm -hmm. how people are searching the internet for it and making mm -hmm. sure that your data looks good in those places. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we spend a ton of time on that, but you know, reviews is a huge, huge, huge focus and, and plan around what we, what we help people understand and work around. Is there, you know, if someone's got a couple of bad reviews mm -hmm. on there, is there something businesses can do to overcome that? Or is that just like, that's your death warrant. That's what it's. No, no. I, it's it, like, it's really easy to overcome reviews. Uh, as long as you have, uh, the, the way I like to explain it is that you bake the review process um, into your business process, mm -hmm. which means that you ask every customer mm -hmm. whether they're happy or or not happy for feedback. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of different online platforms. I, I, I was an owner of one that was called Gather Up, mm -hmm. um, a part owner in that one. We sold that this year um, and, and it's still running. It's a wonderful platform. Uh, and, and it's like a, a feedback engine where people can get internal feedback mm -hmm. or they can use it to also help direct people to review sites. Mm -hmm. But when you bake in this, this feedback process, mm -hmm. then it allows your business to grow. Mm -hmm. And it also means that like the, the feedback you're getting today, whether positive or negative mm -hmm. will be replaced tomorrow mm -hmm. and the next day and the next day and the next day. And so I find so hopefully you're learning from experiences yeah, getting better. You, yeah. Your business gets better through the feedback. And so if you have a couple negative reviews, like one, learn from it. Mm -hmm. Um, two, then the next day work on getting more reviews. Mm -hmm. And so over time, those negative reviews get buried and you end up with a truly accurate representation mm -hmm. of a business. Now, mm -hmm. like a lot of people are like, oh, I only want to have a five-star business. Mm -hmm. What is five-star in our world? Yeah. Like outside of a few resorts yeah. in the Maldives and like, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, and there's always going to be someone that's yeah. unhappy. I read all sorts of travel reviews Ex where they're like, it was too sandy. And you're like, you're yeah. at the beach. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. And, and like, and, and the thing, the thing is, is we don't live in a five-star world. Mm -hmm. We live in probably about a, I don't know, 4.2 star <laughs> world. Right. Yeah. And so, so what, what people need to do is try to be real mm -hmm. and negative reviews are real. Like, mm -hmm. and so if, if I see a business that's hundred percent, five stars, hundred reviews, I'm like, okay, paid, 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 paid family member, <laughs> paid, paid, you know? Um, and so, so like I generally try to look and see more how a person handles their negative reviews. Mm -hmm. And this is how I shop Amazon as well. Read the best, read the worst. Yep. And then I see how the business responds. And I'm like, I can live with that. Yeah. Like they handled the issue. Mm -hmm. And that's more of what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, We've all say, seen negative reviews yeah. where like the, 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 the owner doesn't ever respond or the ones are like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let's get you a replacement or whatever. Yeah. And then you feel comfortable like yeah. they're going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. So um, 4.2 to 4.5 is like the sweet spot. Yeah. That's, that's that where you need to be as you start getting above that. It starts looking fishy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to pivot and ask you about some of the other things you've been doing in addition to starting businesses and, mm -hmm. and having a family. Uh, you've written a book. I have. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I I stepped out of Nifty like two years ago as far as like full-time day-to-day operation. So mm -hmm. now I sit like we have our Nifty Marketing Agency company and then we have Nifty Ventures, which is the owner of all these other mm -hmm. projects and different things that we have running at any given time. Um, and so I, I spend a lot of time in investment and I spend a lot of time like thinking and working in just whatever mm -hmm. project I'm interested and passionate about at the time. 
Uh, and one of those that I took on was writing, writing the book you mentioned. Um, and uh, so the, I, I wrote it over the course of um, 2000, it was pretty much 2018 and a little bit of 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got it into a publisher and it, I was surprised at how long it took <laughs> to work through a publisher. And yeah. like, so, so it's about a year after it's done is yeah. when it's getting published. Right. Um, but, uh, the book is called, um, my dad's a Muslim, my mom's a lesbian and I'm a Latter-day Saint. Mm-hmm. And it's the story of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's the story of just growing up and, uh, the, the experiences I had and, and like, it was a very big pivot for me compared to writing about marketing, uh, right. f- which I'd done and speaking about marketing for years and years and years and years. Well, yeah, because it's so much more personal. Oh, yeah. It was, it was like opening the door into life, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So what's the response been? I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, so we launched the book November 12th. And, and sold out day the day it launched. Oh my gosh! Yeah, congratulations. Was, which was which was great, right? Like, um, it was out, and then they've they've done a few more runs, and we've it's it's sold very very well, um, <clears throat> and the feedback has been really good. But mm-hmm. it's it's also kind of fascinating because I think anytime you combine um, Islam, uh, homosexuality, and um, Mormons, Latter Day Saints. Like I don't know if that's ever been same... combined. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's a definitely a unique thing. But I think it's like three th- three subjects that people are fairly passionate about, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and so, it's like I think that everything falls in either um, really high or really low. Mm-hmm. It's very polarizing. Yes. Um, and, and the book is, is not polarizing. It's actually just the opposite of that. It's looking at these polarizing things and finding this middle place where everything worked together. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a very hard thing for me. It was like, mm-hmm. it was, it, it, it was conflict on all of this. And I grew up with a lot of feelings around conflict and trying to work it out, but it's more about taking that and finding this area where like, Hey, you know, this can all work together and it's okay. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to fully make sense. A mm-hmm. person doesn't have to be able to like black and white this. Mm-hmm. They just have to be able to realize that it's life, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it happens to be my life and the life that, that, um, you know, I, I had and dealt with and was given these cards to play and same with each of my family members. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so anyhow, it's been, it's been really good. Um, mm-hmm. and, and very, uh, eye catching would probably be <laughs> be the the best the best way to explain that. Mm-hmm. So you talk about how it's you know the it's all very different and kind of polarizing. Do mm-hmm. you feel like it was polarized? Did it did it feel polarizing when you were growing up? And did that come from an internal feeling, or was that external factors kind of weighing those things on you? Tell me about what that experience was growing up with these different kind of elements in yeah in Burley, which is a very nice place to live, but it's not. As diverse not, as bigger cities, yeah, and so yeah, they it's may not. not a city. Yeah. Um, okay, so so you know, take Southern Idaho, mm-hmm. just in general. It's a very conservative area, um, and then take it in the nineties, and mm-hmm. so then you times the conservatism by like seventy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I think that. I think that really, like my experience growing up was one of shame and fear really Mm -hmm. you know that there's no other way to say it it's like like my mom came out to me when she was when when I was 10 um and she had a partner by the time I was 12 and um and both like I I love my mom and Mm -hmm. and I love I love her partner Tina um she's she's been my you know stepmom for years even though they like they, they weren't married at that time, right, clearly, yeah, and I yeah. hope, but like she's acted and, and been in the role of my stepmom for years. And, um, and yet they were afraid and I was afraid. My mom was a school teacher, for instance. And when she told me, it was kind of like, nobody can know. Right. Yeah. And the first thing I did at age 10 was go to school the next day, start crying. And I told my teacher, right. I mean, right. cause, cause like, you don't I know what no to do idea. with that yeah. sort of emotion. You didn't, right? Yeah. You need a I just to didn't. Put it. Yeah, exactly. And so like, so then it just got buried Mm -hmm. and um and that wasn't good Mm -hmm. and and so like 
interesting enough, I wasn't like really ridiculed or teased or anything of that nature growing up, Mm -hmm. but I was so worried about being that. And I was worried about my mom losing a job or, you know, having that. And, and so like, yeah, you don't want to see someone you love in a position like that. And, and so over this, over this period of years, it was, it was just like something that was almost like never talked about. It was, mm. I always call it the big rainbow elephant in the room. <laughs> and, um, and I felt like the only way to, pro- to, to properly deal with that was to like bust out the level of shame to non-existence by mm. publishing it to the world. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I mean, really, it's like everything has to have like an opposite reaction of mm-hmm. equal magnitude. And mm. the level of like hide and shame and everything led to the need to like probably come out on a really big stage and talk about this much more. Yeah. And so for me, that's, that's how I did it was through this book and, and just talking about the feelings, the experiences of growing up and, and hiding it and you know, how the community handled it, mm-hmm. which like in general, <clears throat> you know, I think people did very well. Um, they, but, but nobody knew how to talk about it. So was it, they handled it well because they didn't talk about it or was I it? I think they handled it well in that process of, of saying that they didn't act out of hate. Mm-hmm. Um, they That's acted cool. mainly probably out of curiosity and <laughs> awkwardness. Yeah. And. Which, you know, if it's new to somebody, like. Exactly. It's better to go maybe that way than to the other way. And so part of this is trying to make the conversation way less awkward, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it has, I think a lot of people. You know, I, I'm just surprised at how many how many people are are willing to have conversations around harder subjects that might not fit in their religious mm-hmm. belief or their conservatism or their liberalism or anything. That on a one on one basis, they can sit, they can sit down, they can have a conversation, and mm-hmm. maybe not fully agree, but they can appreciate the differences of somebody else. Like and see the know, humanism con- in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like contrast that with like our national um, stage of of uh, political mess that we're in, mm-hmm. and like it gives me hope. Mm-hmm. You know, it 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 does. It gives me hope because mm-hmm. I've I've seen people that I would have never ever imagined would have been supportive mm-hmm. of me writing a book about that or potentially just even tackling the subject for themselves. Mm-hmm. And they've been like, you know what, you taught me quite a few things um, about acceptance mm-hmm. and, you know, through your, through your writings or something. And I appreciate that. It's a yeah. good thing. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. And, and if, if somebody's looking for like the right answer or, you know, what's right and wrong, like they're not, you're not going to find that in, mm-hmm. in what I've written about. I'm mm-hmm. all it is, is like, my story Mm -hmm. and dealing with it the best way I knew how, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. How did you see, um, as far as the relationship with your dad being, Mm -hmm. being Muslim again, not, there's some religious diversity in Idaho, but not, not a that whole much. lot. And so, so, so he wasn't in Idaho. Oh, okay. he's, he's actually from Palestine. He was born and raised in Palestine. Okay. Um, he's lived in United Arab Emirates, um, mm-hmm. just a- around a few different places. And he did not find out about me until I was 30. Oh. Um, so, so that's, you know, a, yeah. a big part of the story kind of goes into this about like, um, my mom met him at college mm-hmm. and it was very, uh, it was a very hard thing. She, she she got pregnant at the same time. Um, really came to realize that she she liked women more than mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. Um, and so then like broke up yeah. before before letting him know about yeah. the baby. Yeah, and it kind of all just hit at once. Yeah, right. I'm sure it was a conflicting time. For oh her. my gosh, yeah. yeah. Level of conflict is I I don't know of a harder <laughs> situation, right? Yeah. And so um, then comes this hard thing, you know, and and this even goes into a little bit of what I would consider like Islamophobia on even her part mm-hmm. in, in sense that has since totally gone away. But like she was so worried about how he would react. Mm-hmm. And she was so worried that if he was part of my life, like let's say he took me for a weekend and then left to go back home and she would never see me again because yeah. she would have no rights in, in an area oh, that he was at or yeah, something, right? right? And so it was like, 
this was like fear um, that that really drove her. Yeah. And and some of that fear came from a movie that was about a subject like that called Not Without My Daughter oh. that kind of talked about this uh, and you know an Islamic man that that had a wife from America that went over to um, live you know with him yeah. um, in the Middle East and then ended up like kind of losing her rights to her children and had to sneak out of the country with her children. Yeah. Right. And so like tons of fear. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so she hid it. Yeah. Right or wrong. That's what happened. You know, and it happens, I think even without the, the element of different religions in different countries, like plenty of people stay in marriages that they're not happy in because they have kids and they're worried about losing that relationship with yeah, their kids. Totally. And so like you could see adding those different elements mm-hmm. onto that where a mother's love for their child is just would make it really hard. Yeah. Yeah. And and so like so so ultimately over time I think both my mom and I realized like hey, you know, it's time. Yeah. He needs to know. And so then um <laughs> funny story on how that worked out. I don't need it. I don't even need to go into that one. It's a longer <laughs> story, but anyhow. So he he, you know, we end up eventually reaching out and um and starting a relationship mm-hmm. and he was like as as good as I can I could have hoped for mm-hmm. as far as just like how he handled the information coming from my mom yeah because that would be shocking yeah it would be yeah. shocking and I could see somebody being really upset but like he he wasn't he just felt bad he's like I'm so sorry that you felt like you had to keep this for me and I would have loved to have been part of Mike's life mm-hmm. but clearly you know things happen the way that they needed to happen yeah you know and, and just kind of left it up left it up to mm-hmm. that. And, and so like, I appreciated that. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but I think, I think just going back, back on, on the idea of, of, you know, I, I grew up with this idea. Uh, I was scared. I mm-hmm. was truly scared of, of, you know, I would say the Muslim culture or Islam in general, mm-hmm. and it was totally out of like false information. Um, an experience that really changed me before we, we reached out to my dad was that we went to Turkey Mm -hmm. and, um, I went there for a folk festival that Mm -hmm. we, we run the, the folk festival in Burley Mm -hmm. and there's a team that travels from Burley that goes to all of these different festivals across the country or Mm -hmm. across the world. And so we did, uh, Turkey, this is back, um, I think it was not early two thousands, but like, I don't know, 2010 ish or Mm -hmm. something. I, I don't know. And, and we, we were there representing America. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was blown away at how wonderful everyone was to mm-hmm. us and like the experiences we had and how similar, like, cause here we were driving down the road, um, you know, in, in just around, uh, Istanbul and, like I look at these neighborhoods and it was like, okay, here's this development of houses that was totally built around a mosque. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we have one of those in Burley. <laughs> it's like a, yeah. a housing development around a church, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, and it was so similar mm-hmm. yet like this totally different, you know, it was a different religion, but the cultural aspects of how they live their lives and centered it, centered it around uh, mm-hmm. the idea of faith and community through this faith was like, so apparent. It was mm-hmm. like being in an alternate reality of <laughs> Idaho and Utah. I yeah. mean, really. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I was just like, okay. And and then as we got to know people, like from a standard perspective and everything else, it was just like two people um, living a very, very similar life. Mm-hmm. And so that really opened my eyes mm-hmm. and, and helped me understand that like the differences were very, very slim mm-hmm. um, when you really got down to it. Yeah. And so, and we've maintained friendship with, uh, with people. As a matter of fact, one of the team guides, my wife and her mo- mom continued to travel through Turkey with mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. and she guided them around. I mean, it was just, it That's was great. Awesome. Yeah. It was, it was a wonderful experience. That sounds so amazing. I think it's true. Like regardless, you know, any religion or any person from any around the mm-hmm. world, once you meet with them and talk to them on a human basis, like one-on-one, it becomes apparent that their differences are little to none. You you may live somewhere different. You may have a different religion, but you're also people who love your family and love your community. And and that's really the most important thing. Exactly. Exactly. Speaking of community, tell Mm -hmm. me about, we haven't really talked that much about Burley, but like, what is Burley like (laughs) if no one's been to Burley? Um, what was it like growing up? What's it like now, particularly owning a business and having a family there? You know, um, what would I say about Burley? I think it's, it's, it's a hidden gem. 
like Idaho is a hidden gem. And then you have certain hidden gems even within <laughs> Idaho because like the rest of Idahoans are like, no, no, not going to do it. And then, <laughs> and then like, and, and you have that. So like, like, I've traveled, I've, I've traveled a lot. I've traveled the world. I've traveled the States. I've traveled just a ton for work, business, everything else. And there's very few places where you can combine the things that you have in Burley. Mm-hmm. Um, the Snake River there is, is recreational water. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can have like your big wakeboard boats mm-hmm. and you can inner tube and jet ski and all of these things mm-hmm. uh, along this along the river and it's mm-hmm. and and the fact that it's not a lake and it's an actual river means that it's not as choppy and you don't get the waves because they kind of push downstream right yeah um which is super unique mm-hmm. and having private property mm-hmm. along the river yet again is super unique how mm-hmm. many people can own and have their own dock. Yeah. You know, the only place, the only other place is you start following along the Snake River that has that is around like uh, Buell area mm-hmm. and Hagerman, right? Mm-hmm. And there's just a couple little small pockets. And in Burley, you have like 20 miles mm-hmm. of river mm-hmm. uh, that's like that. Yeah. You know, so so there's these wonderful hidden like properties and everything else mm-hmm. that I would consider, you know, perfect summer homes, um, even winter homes, etc. Yeah. So I, I've loved that about it. Um the the mountain biking in and around there and Twin Falls mm-hmm. is is fantastic. So mm-hmm. we've gotten heavy into mountain biking. Uh, we go to Pomerel, which is the ski resort. Mm-hmm. Often it's about I don't know about uh, 30, 30 minutes out, outside of town. Um, City of Rocks, of course, mm-hmm. is about that same same distance as well. So like from an outdoor enthusiast perspective, mm-hmm. it's like way good. Yeah, <laughs> way good. Yeah. Um, and then when you start when you start going into like the amenities of the town, mm-hmm. uh, I I it used to drive me crazy, like there was nothing, mm-hmm. there really wasn't. You know, <laughs> when I grew up, it was like I mean I just remember thinking, uh, there's just there's there's not a lot to do or there's not a lot of businesses. But what I've seen over the last even just ten years, mm-hmm. um, there's there's a a really a, a, a growing sense of entrepreneurship um, mm-hmm. towards small business, especially along our main road. So mm-hmm. like old downtown Burley has has been on the decline for a long time. Mm-hmm. In the last 10 years, many people, including us, have bought and renovated some of those downtown buildings. Yeah, Very your storefront looks Falls. amazing. Yeah, like yeah, it really it's... like brightens up that section of the block oh, there. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, we, we restored this old brick building, uh, gutted the inside. So it's now, it's, it's like 6,500, just, just shy of seven. 7,000 square feet of like awesome uh, downtown type feeling mm-hmm. industrial office. It's really great. And, and there's a, a restaurant that did the same thing across the, the road. And just many businesses have, have really been starting to put a lot of time and energy mm-hmm. into fixing up downtown. And so it's it's fun. Um, across the river into Rupert and the Rupert Square, mm-hmm. you know, they've done massive projects there. Mm-hmm. And they're doing tons of festivals. And they have the Wilson Theater that's doing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the King Fine Arts Center, which is like one of the biggest auditoriums in Idaho, yeah. right in Burley. Mm-hmm. It's at the high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a combination of a, a generous donation from the King family um, mixed with some of the high school funds to build like this like really legitimate professional theater. Mm-hmm. And so there's plays going on there all the time. I, I do, I've been in many plays. I did a, <laughs> last year I was a Jack and Newsies. Oh, fun. And um, <laughs> it was awesome. And, you know, we, we sold, let's see, 4,000 some odd tickets. Oh my gosh. That's know, like 40% of, of the community. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so then this year's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, fun. Um, and I think they're doing that in Twin Falls as well. Mm-hmm. We were doing it first, just so you know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Burley got it first. No, no. Uh, so, so anyhow, uh, and then in Rupert, they're doing Shrek right now. Mm-hmm. And so like for a small area, the level of arts is insane. Mm-hmm. We have the theater in Oakley. We have the theater in Burley. We have the theater in um, Rupert mm-hmm. and they're all running shows and mm-hmm. different things. And generally speaking, most of the people that are in the shows are from that mini Kaja area. Yeah. And and so there's just like, there's these surprising things that I have not seen in very many um, other surrounding communities or, or other places that I've been around of just for such a small thing, mm-hmm. so many things going on. Definitely. And you, ha- you guys have kids, right? Yes, I have four kids. Four kids. How old are they? We have um, a boy that's 11 and then two girls, uh, nine and six. Yes, six, <laughs> almost seven. And then a little boy that's three. Awesome. What do they like to do? 
Um, Drive different. drive their parents. No, that's I'm their just job. Kidding. That's their primary job. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so so we're a big ski family. So we we go like everybody in the family, other than our three year old. We usually start about that age, but you know we're like just getting him into it. But mm-hmm. um, uh, like we all ski a ton. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all like to travel together a lot. Um, my wife is a, uh, clogging instructor Ooh, fun. <laughs> and, and dance instructor. And so like, th- it's a forced thing. They all yeah. have to clog <laughs> and they're all in, you know, they're all in dance. Um, so, so, you know, they're just involved in, in mm-hmm. about every type of activity from clogging dance piano. We, we go swimming and we, and like our family is a big connoisseur of hot springs. Ooh, and yes. so Southern Idaho is a wonderful place for that. We yes. go, we, we spend a lot of time going out to Hagerman and mm-hmm. hitting up Banbury's and, um, and, uh, Miracle. And then we, we also have, uh, one that's out in, in the, uh, oh, what, um, south, south of, south of Burley, you have like Malta, Elba and Almo. Oh, uh-huh. And they have a uh, hot springs in Almo. Oh, that's, I don't that's think that's I knew really about those awesome. ones. And, and yeah, yeah, that one's great. They have a big pool and then they have, um, three kind of like smaller soaker pools, different temperatures. Fun. So what's and your so, favorite hot pool? Ooh. If you had to pick one, that's the only one you get to go to from now on. I know it's hard to choose. That is a hard one. You know, I would probably say it's a tie between the Alma one and um, and then Banbury's. Mm-hmm. I love Banbury's old school style and their <laughs> log, right? They yeah. have the, the, the log... But the Alma one's great because they have the diversity of pools. Mm-hmm. And they still have, like, a big play pool as yeah. well. Miracle's great, but, man, it's busy. It's, yeah. It's busy these days. So it is. It's, Especially it's hard to... the winter time. You're like, oh, oh yeah. I'm going to go get some warm water. And, yeah. yeah it's yep. definitely nice. Um, so if someone's never been to Idaho, it's going to mm-hmm. be their first time. Secret spots, things they have to check out, maybe other than the hot pools, because that's, I think, probably at the top of the list right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, other than that, you're not going to find a better family ski resort than Pomerel. Mm-hmm. Like if you're trying to teach kids of different ages or do something as a family, one, it's way less than you find, like from a cost perspective, yes. mm-hmm. it's way less than, um, you know, going to a bigger resort that's over the hundred dollar price ticket. I think mm-hmm. a lift ticket there, you know, they, they do deals and, and different things throughout the year, but you're like around the 50 or under. Mark. Oh yeah. Um, and there's two lifts and it's still a fairly large um, space. And so everything funnels down to the lodge. So mm-hmm. like our kids can, I, I feel comfortable letting them go alone. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of stand there at the bottom and eventually you're going to meet up. Yeah. So so that one's like in the wintertime, I would say, is a really, mm-hmm. you know, big deal. Um, the the other thing that, that I would say is just doing something or staying along the Snake River in Burley. Mm-hmm. Um there's there are some wonderful like just experiences to be had there mm-hmm. whether you like to paddleboard or swim or, or even the spudman is a really cool yeah, triathlon. The Spud, yeah the spudman triathlon which is like a huge deal yeah um i think it's know. like one of the fastest ones because you're going with the current of yeah, the river yeah, so if it, you're looking for a fast like time three or four yeah, yeah. <laughs> three or four miles an hour or something i don't know exactly yeah. what it is but but like it's fast enough that people people have their best swims on there, <laughs> yeah. right? And so it so it's became a really popular um, popular one. Uh, you know, just just spending time on the snake in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's unique. It's unique in Minicaja mm-hmm. uh, across. You know, the snake is super fun uh, just throughout Idaho. But the, the spot there is is a very unique version of it. Yeah, and it's definitely different because, like you've mentioned, it's you're right on the water, whereas in Twin Falls, you're up in the canyon. You can get down. Yeah. You know, down in the canyon, but it's definitely a different landscape and a different way to enjoy the river. Exactly. And mm-hmm. uh, and so I think for entertainment and things, and then our, our 4th of July celebrations, um, both in Rupert and in Burley with mm-hmm. fireworks, uh, I think Rupert's generally does theirs around June 30th, and mm-hmm. then Burley's is around July 4th. Um, right on so Burley's is right on the river as well Mm -hmm. which is super fun you can get a boat sit out there right under the the fireworks right under them it's Mm -hmm. it's really cool that's awesome anything I haven't asked you about things people should know about Burley or your book or anything else we haven't chatted about 
Um, you know, if you're interested in the book, mm -hmm. it's on it, it's on Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, from Amazon, it's like Kindle and Audible and everything mm -hmm. there. Um, at bookstores, it's in Deseret Book in Twin Falls. Okay. And then in Burley, it's at Stokes, uh, the grocery store in Burley. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, online, uh, there's several places. So uh, if, if you're looking for like links to all those places, my website uh, for the book is at mikeramsey.org. Okay. And uh, that, that's a, a good place to check, check things out and kind of links around to all of the business ventures and my writings about Burley and my life and everything else. <laughs> awesome. We'll make sure to um, share that link in our show notes. Awesome. Um, and I just want to thank you for being on the show. It's been really awesome chatting with you and I appreciate you sharing everything. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for listening to Secrets Out Idaho. You can follow Southern Idaho Economic Development on social media or visit southernidaho.org to learn more. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can be the first to hear more Secrets Out Idaho. Until next time.